Well, look what we got here. It's a guitar sized box. And I figure, as long as I'm filming, I might as well open it up and see what's inside, right? I actually already know what's inside, and you know what's inside because of the title on the thumbnail, <laughs> the reasons why you clicked on the video. This is a Telecaster style guitar from the company, let's see if the name is on here, Boya and Zaki. B-O-Y-A and Z-I-Q-I. I'm positive I'm not pronouncing that correctly. But let's take a look at what we got here. Owner's manual, it'll tell me how to play. Customary Radio Shack style cable here and an Allen key for adjusting the truss rod. Oh boy, here we go. Is this brand gonna be my new favorite budget guitar brand? I say budget, but these things are like 360, I think. So it's not like all the way budget, but it's that competing with, you know, Squire kind of price point. There we go. There it is. Let's take a look at this and figure out what we're dealing with here. Tell the action's a little bit higher than I'd like personally. I'm going to be adjusting that truss rod. It's bowed just a little bit more than I would like. Oh man. The neck is sitting in the pocket. A little bit uneven. Either the neck is shimmed in a weird way or it's not seated correctly or this neck pocket is not cut totally correctly. It's got a tag here for Diderio XL nickel wound strings. So that's nice, they're using name brand strings. Unmarked closed back tuners on here. Should probably pull up the specs. I know that this thing's got stainless steel frets on it. I'll read all the specs here in a minute. All your standard Telecaster style details here. Oh man, this, this knob is grinding a little bit. It just needs to be pulled a little bit. There we go. Pushed in all the way, it's grinding against the control plate. There's a couple little details here popping out at me right away. Single ply pit guard. I want to get that cover off of there. The fretboard looks and feels dry, but it's got some interesting figuring going on. I'm curious to see what happens if I get a little bit of hydration on there, a little bit of fretboard oil. I don't think there's any finish on there. It feels pretty raw. Maybe it has a very thin finish on it. I mean, the back of the neck looks beautiful. Some kind of wild figuring going on there, some swirls in the wood and whatnot. It's a chunky feeling neck. I'm gonna raise my seat here a little bit. <laughs> there we go, lower the table. <laughs> the ends of the frets feel decent right off the bat. All right, let's pull up the specs and read what they say about their own guitar. I've got the Amazon listing here somewhere. There it is. Boya Enziki BZT-098 classic solid body electric guitar, 22 stainless steel frets, hand polished, alder body, roasted maple neck, deluxe switch and jack, vintage light yellow. Yeah, it's got like an electro socket jack there. That's a nice detail. Boya and Ziki custom pickups with high quality European brand magnet wire and Alnico 5 for bright, crisp and layered tone. 
Whether it's rock, blues, or country, the BZT-098 is ready to take your playing to the moon and back. You're going to outer space with this, guys. 25 and a half inch scale, 1 to 18 ratio tuners. An interesting part of their ad copy on their Amazon listing is they have this whole section basically throwing shade at Ert. <laughs> they don't call them out by name, but they have this whole section about why you shouldn't want ball end frets. Like Ert is famous for their stainless steel frets that have these perfectly smooth round ball ends on them. And Ert accomplishes that by pre-dressing the frets before they're installed. They cut all the frets, they polish the ends to be ball ends, and then they install the frets, which is not the traditional way of installing frets. So they have this whole section here calling out reasons why you wouldn't like that, why you wouldn't want that. And I'm not gonna read it all, but I think you guys should click the link down below and read through that and let me know in the comments section if you agree with Boya and Ziki's assessment of that situation. Otherwise, it seems like it's a pretty standard Telecaster style thing going on here. There are some modern features going on. You got a comfort heel right here. You got a little bit of a cutaway there. You do have a belly cut, brass saddles, Alnico 5 pickups, apparently. Let's plug it in and see what it sounds like and see how it plays. All tuned up as far as the tuners go. They're nice and smooth. No jumpiness, no irregularities, nothing like that. It seemed to go up to tune just fine. Oh, and by the way, I'll be playing through the two Princeton's rig. I'm on the middle position right now. There's some twang in there, I can hear it. Oh, that action is high. I'm gonna need to adjust that. Telecaster right off the bat. Here is the neck pickup. Nice and warm. The frets feel nice and comfortable. No sharp edges detected so far. They look really well dressed. They're definitely not those ball ends that they were complaining about. <laughs> it's a big feeling neck. It feels slightly wide. It's nice and thick and chunky. Feels nice. I like the feel of that bigger, chunkier neck. Yeah, the action is so high that really past the fifth fret, I'm struggling a little bit. Also, it sounds like the neck pickup needs to be raised or something. It's a bit quieter than the bridge. That might get better just with adjusting the action. Let's do it. We're here. Let's do it. Let's adjust that truss rod to see if we can get better action out of this thing and play it the way it's probably meant to be played. Yeah, that's a lot better. It had a really extreme curve going on with the neck. I just gave it a couple turns with the Allen key and it's not perfectly straight now. You don't want your neck to be laser straight. You want a little bit of relief there and that's what I set it to. But man, yeah, the, the action was just way too high, even starting up at the fourth and the fifth fret and it was because the neck was bowed in. 
just so dramatically. Let's see how it plays. Now, also, I dialed up the neck pickup to be closer to the string, so maybe that'll be better balanced now. The switch tip feels loose to me. Is it pushed on all the way? It's like wobbling on me. <laughs> There's a couple little details here that are catching my attention funny. All right, let's see what we got. Yeah. might be close to sizzling out there on the 14th. But the 15th is fine. I think it's really close. I think I got it as close as I can in the moment to be dialed in very nicely. Don't be afraid to adjust your truss rods, guys. Little turns, little adjustments, then check your progress. But you can do it. I believe in you. Let's check out that neck pickup now. It's just a really dark sounding neck pickup. The bridge pickup is that classic bright Telly Twang. Here's the middle again. Pickup is pretty dang dark to me. Let's try with some drive though. Here's some light overdrive from my 50 50. Here is the middle position. Stack in the Wampler Bell.
good going on there, and then I fudged it up. Now that neck pickup is darker than I feel like I should expect out of a Telecaster style pickup set. But it does give you some variation to work with there. You've got a super bright bridge, which is pretty classic for a Telecaster. But then you get that really dark, creamy sound out of the neck, which works great with like higher gain distortion and stuff. sounding that pickup. That's what that darkness really lends to. I want a jazzy Telecaster style guitar. Might be the one for you. Let's roll the tone back, see what happens. basic setup on it. Just adjusted that neck truss a little bit. Interesting. I think I want to try putting a little bit of hydration on that fretboard because it does feel and look dry to me. I just want to see what it'll look like before and after. I feel like they should have put some kind of clear coat on the fretboard to make that baked, roasted, fried, sous vide maple fretboard pop a little bit nicer. They've got some decent figuring on here. A little bit of visual interest in that wood. Why wouldn't you want it to pop? It is really dry. It is thirsty. Yeah, that is looking so much better. And that little bit of figuring in the wood has a chance to give you some iridescence now, which is nice. I think it's neat that guitars at this price point are hitting the market with features that 
are kind of upselling the value of them. They've got features that I'd consider more premium, features you'd find on name brand guitars at much higher price points, pushing into that like high mid tier kind of price point with the stainless steel frets, you know, Alneco 5 pickups, baked sous vide, fried, roasted maple, however it's cooked, things like that. They are upsells that make guitars like this attractive. But are the other little details, hindrances, like that funky, you know, misconnect on the neck joint, this knob scraping when I first pulled it out of the box, I was able to pull it up, but the moment that that gets pushed in again, yeah, it's back to scraping. The loose switch tip, it seems like it's a mismatched switch tip. It just doesn't belong with the switch, so it doesn't fit snug. It just kind of wobbles on there. Little details like that. I mean, the dry fretboard and the truss adjustment, that's fairly normal. I've had to do that before with guitars out of the box. I mean, the dry fretboard thing. <laughs> that happens quite a bit. I get all sorts of guitars that have thirsty fretboards. But yeah, what do you guys think? I think these are 360. Let me check the price again. 359. 359. Is this competing against the Squires out there? Is this competing against the Ertz out there? It's got stainless steel frets. It's got decent sounding pickups. It's got the baked maple neck. There's decisions to be made at that price point. It's not one of those no-brainer price points where it's like, oh man, $175, I, I'm gonna get it just to try it. If it's functional at all, then it was a good buy. At that price point, you're starting to have a lot of options. Is this guitar an option for you at $360? That's what I want to know. What do you think of the color? It's kind of like a banana pudding take on a butterscotch telly. It's not butterscotch, it's definitely banana pudding. You can get butterscotch pudding or you can get banana. This is banana. <laughs> get it a white pit guard. It would look perfect for that sort of thing. For banana pudding, I mean. <laughs> All right, thanks for watching. Huge thanks to Boya and Ziki for sending this out to me to check out. Please like, subscribe, dislike, leave me rude and nasty comments. Support us on Patreon. Buy a shirt if you're naked and stay grounded. Bye, everybody.